Hi. So I have been waiting for this for quite some time and what we're gonna do in this video is talk about the Anfa box cutter. This is the knife that I use to cut open all of my Amazon box and packages. The blade is really sharp. I'm really just kidding. So you probably already found out from the video title though that I will be talking and unboxing the X-Rite i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus, which is their latest color spectrophotometer. And here it is. This is the box for the device. The picture of the device is not to scale, so it's actually much larger than the device itself, but this is what the box looks like. We're gonna unbox this, see what accessories it comes with it. But because this is a color spectrophotometer, that means that it will do so many things. It will calibrate displays, projector, and also it would profile any type of paper that you have. This also happens to be the plus model with the wider opening aperture. So this is supposed to be much better at calibrating paper that has a lot of texture to it. And we're gonna put this through some quick tests. I'll give you my first impression of it and I will release a lot more videos about this device down the road in the future. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. All right, so to get started, let's bring the box into position. Rip open these. Whoa, this is amazing. So we have this carrying case. That's really neat. So let's see what's inside this carrying case. I like this I1. Uh, symbol there that's like this heart emblem. It's really nice. Let's pull this open. And what do we have? So at the very top part, we have the board here. This is what we are going to use the ruler to go through and measure the print, I believe. There's a certificate of performance. Talks about the device itself, the serial number, the certification date the test and also thank you very much for buying the device. So really cool stuff. Okay, put this back. So that was the table we used to do the print. This is the ruler that you would guide the color spectrophotometer through when you're trying to do the calibration. More guide devices. So I will leave that there for now. Let's pull this top part open and right below it. This is really cool. So what we have inside, this is the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus. This is pretty much how big the device is. It's a bit larger than the i1 Pro 1 and 2 that have come before it. And as I mentioned, this is the plus model. So it has a larger aperture opening that's supposed to be much better for measuring any kind of textured paper. And I'm, like I said, I'm really curious how it would perform overall on calibrating displays, calibrating projectors, um, and specifically prints that are highly, you know, textured, such as a lot of matte prints out there, including Japanese rice paper. So there's the base. The nice thing about the spectral photometer is that on the base itself, there's always this, what we call a um, ceramic tile. This is a custom white point that is custom programmed to every single color spectrophotometer device. So every time before you run a calibration, you're supposed to do a calibration on this first to measure the white point of it. This way you get the most accurate color possible. This is the holder that you would use to hang the device um, to, I think this may be the projector holder. I'm not 100% sure yet. Have to probably look at the manual at some point. And then we have this holder right here. This is for its display calibration. Really neat. This is for the projector itself, and I'm trying to now figure out what this does. So we'll figure that out in just a moment here. Then we also have these filters that we have. One of them is a polarizer. So again, you can take this filter out and replace the filter on the device itself, depending on the items you're calibrating. And there's also a ambient light filtration. So if you want to measure the ambient, you can a USB cable and also a very extremely, let's see here, thick manual booklet. Really cool. Uh, this booklet is fairly thick because it's a manual in multiple languages. So if you just do the English portion itself or just for one specific language, you're probably looking about maybe ye thick or so and not the entire booklet, but this mates to cover everything. So that's 
pretty much that. On the inside flap of this, what we do get is also a few more things. So we get a mini color checker chart. This also ships with the i1 Studio. So if you have purchased the i1 Studio device, you will also get this mini color checker classic chart. There's the OBC mask for color checker proof. Again, have to read what that does. And then this is the color checker proof itself. So there are holes in there and there's definitely a way to use this, which I need to figure out and probably read the manual on how to do that. But pretty cool device so far. This has, again, the unboxing, it's fairly, I would say uneventful, but this uses the i1 profiler software, which is gonna be really cool. So what I'm gonna do first is let's take the device out and let's try to run some display calibration. Let's start out with a laptop calibration and see what happens. So I'm gonna give you my first impression of this device by first running a display calibration on my MacBook Pro and then we'll pull some profiles up to see the comparison and see how the color looks and so forth. But this device that I mentioned earlier during the unboxing, this is the positioning device. So if you want to measure a color, you will put the spectral photometer on here and then you would point it to the color that you want to measure. But this is the positioning device to help you find out exactly where you want the colors to be that you want to measure. So you can line this up first and then put the color spectral photometer on there. And that's what this is for. I have some accessory pull out. I have this thing, the counterweight to hang the device from the display so that I can do a calibration. I also have this base right here that has the custom white balance point for this device. And the moment I pull down, there's a serial number here. If you have multiple of these devices lying around, you always want to make sure that the serial number of this device matches with the base because they have been custom calibrated to each other. One thing that I didn't mention during the unboxing is that there are two versions of this device. There is the i1 Photo Pro 3 and the Photo Pro 3 Plus. The model that I have in my hand here is the Plus model. And I probably already mentioned this briefly that this one has a wider aperture opening. So it is supposed to be much better at measuring highly textiled paper. So that means all your matte paper out there, any kind of uh, rice paper, any custom material, this is supposed to do a really good job of that. And we're gonna put it through as paces. But before then, let's do a software calibration. So I have i1 profiler pull up and because I have done numerous calibration videos already using i1 Display Pro and Pro Plus, it makes this very easy. So I can just use the same software. Again, I am going to choose advanced mode to run the display calibration and I will leave pretty much everything at the default value. The luminance at 80 candela works perfect for me. Let's go through a large patch set. So in the measurement screen, when you have a color spectral photometer, something that is different is that you can't just go in and start the measurement right away. If you see there, start measurement is grayed out. What you have though is a calibrate button. So what you have to do is open this aperture up so that you expose this white ceramic tile, put the device on there like so, pair it, I'll put it down on the table here and then click on calibrate. What this is going to do right now is calibrate this specific spectral photometer to its custom white point that has been calibrated from the factory. And then afterwards we can do a measurement. Perfect. So now that the calibration is done, I am going to move my device, tilt my display backwards a little bit. This is gonna put a lot of weight and strain on this laptop display. So let's see how this works. Oh, let's adjust this counterweight a little bit more. So we're gonna pull that out and pull this. It probably makes a little bit more sense if you adjust this before you put the device on the display, that would help a lot. But right now I'm gonna have that partially on the table as well, so it doesn't put too much strain on the actual display itself. See what happens. So this is gonna measure mostly the bottom part of the display, which I don't like. Let's readjust this further. Click on next. And now it's going to start to do its measurement. It's gonna ask me first though to set the luminance point because I have enabled it in a way that it will, that I can go in and change the brightness of the display. And I have my target set to 80. Let's see what we're reading right now. I'm reading 97 at the moment. So let's see if I bring that down, maybe one more. How much would that be? 93, not enough. Let's use the 
Pro tip, option shift, and let's bring that up a little, or bring that down a little bit. Now it's reading 91. All right, so currently it's now reading 84 candela. Another thing too about the spectral photometer is that it doesn't refresh the measurement value quite as fast as the colorimeter. So if you have a colorimeter, you will see the numbers jumping right away. This one does take a little bit longer than a colorimeter to go through and refresh the value, but this is good. So I'm gonna go click next and start the measurement. Another thing too is that once you're done calibrating the white point of the color spectral photometer, make sure you close that down so that that white point is not exposed to light any longer than it has to and dust and debris doesn't fall on it. If dust and debris does fall on it for some reason, you can also wipe it clean with a microfiber cloth. This is based on the instruction in the manual itself. So this is going to go through 461 patches. It will take some time. We'll let it run and then afterwards we'll come back and take a look at some preliminary result, what we were able to get from the laptop. All right, so that did take quite some time. Uh, this is normal for a color spectral photometer to take longer than a colorimeter to do any type of screen measurement. So now that we have the result, I'll take this off our screen. We're going to save the value and we should then do a quick QA and see the result using a color checker classic. Perfect. So before I can do a display QA, what I need to do is run the custom calibration on again. So I will hold this together, put it on the table and calibrate or press the side button of the device. While we're waiting for that, what I'm going to be doing is using this i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus to calibrate two other display. One of them is going to be the BenQ PD3220U. That is their design display that is software calibration only. So I'll be calibrating that using i1 Profiler software. And then afterwards, we're going to compare the result uh, of it compared to a colorimeter and see what the difference are and what are my perceived visual differences between the two different color profile. And lastly, what I'm also going to do as well is run a calibration with this device using the Palette Master Element software, that's the software by BenQ, using one of their SW hardware calibrated display and compare the result of that too, compared to a color spectral photometer and see how the measurement comes out. And lastly, what I am going to do with this device is do two printer profile or paper profiling. One of them is going to be a paper from Canson Infinity. It is going to be the edition etching. And the other one is going to be a Japanese paper called the Kinwashi because it's a really highly textured paper, but I'll show you that in just a moment too. So now that we're done with this, take the device off. Let's do a QA report. So the QA report average on all the patches 0.6 and a maximum of 1.1. If we then go and change this average delta E to 2, maximum to 5, this is going to pass. So the result that you see here are pretty much within line of the colorimeter. Some of the color patches are reading slightly different than what the colorimeter does, the i1 Display Pro and the Display Pro Plus. But I think that this calibration, it's going to be a good calibration, very similar to the other devices. The advantage of this, like I said, is that it can do printer and paper profiling. So there's a lot to say about this color spectral photometer and my first impression of it. So far from display calibration using two software calibrated display, one of them being my laptop display, the other one being the BenQ PD3220U, their design display. The color range and the color gamut that it was able to calibrate are very similar to each other with a very low delta E of anything below two, which I consider good because most of the time in a photo itself, I wouldn't be able to discern the difference between those. Using the BenQ SW270C, which is a model I have here with Palette Master Element, I've run through the calibration both with the colorimeter and the color spectral photometer. The color ranges are pretty much within a hairline of each other. That means they're really close. The delta E values are really close between both of them as well. So I would say that they're really great for calibrating displays and whichever device you have for display calibration, it's going to be good. But where the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus really shines is in paper profiling. And these are the two papers that I've used to do a demo for this calibration and my first impression. This is a Japanese rice paper called a Kinwashi, and it has a lot of texture in it. The paper white is slightly off, is a lot more, I would say, yellow 
ish tone and again the paper also have some translucency going on there so i made a custom chart here with 1000 patches and i printed all of them and scanned all these in to create a custom profile for this paper and i made some prints from it which looks fairly impressive so here are the prints that i made using this so this is one of the iceland shot and I really love the way how this has turned out, especially for landscape photo. I think this looks really fantastic. This is another one. And so far from what I can tell, being able to print on these really highly textured paper with different translucency, with this kind of color fidelity, it's really amazing and accuracy. This is the Aurora Borealis shot that I have. This come out a little bit darker. I haven't reprinted yet. Um, but so far, first impression wise from this paper, it's really good. I tend to think that light picture tends to look better. For example, like this one, you really get to see the blue in the icebergs and so forth compared to the pictures, you know, for instance, on the BenQ display, you really get to see all the blues and everything in there. As for the larger paper, this is a 13 by 19 Ken Sewn Infinity Edition Etching Rag. And I like this paper a lot because of the texture and just the coating that they have on it in general. It's really a nice pa paper to use. And for this one, I've gone a little bit crazy and I used 1,632 color patches. So this is printed over four pages. And the one thing to note about this i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus is that because this is a plus model with a larger aperture opening, the color patches that I'm printing out here these squares have to be larger than the regular i1 Photo 3, which is the regular device without the plus one. So this is going to take a little bit more, I would say, paper real estate. So you're going to be using more pages to print about the equivalent number of patches compared to the non-plus model. But I don't know. I So far, I'm able to get really great colors out from it, and I really love what I'm getting. So, for instance, let's take this iceberg photo. So this is the one printed with the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus. And this is another one that I've used another different profile to print it from, um, not custom necessarily. And what I can tell you right now is that with the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus, I'm able to get the blues in you know, the iceberg to match much closer to what I'm seeing on the display. And also the blue in the mountain areas of the ice and everything is much more accurate, including the saturation in the orange tones would look really great on there too. And the one other really great thing about this device too is that this print, this profile right here is based on the spectral lighting of the light that I have in the studio. So I'll show you that in a moment what I'm talking about, but this is really cool. Let's take a look at another photo here. This is the one of Taylor and one of the things that I'm always having a problem with this picture specifically is getting the green to look proper, to look the same way how I'm seeing on the display, which is somewhat muted. And most of the time when I use any other profile, the green has a tendency to be a lot more punchy, where this one has a more punchy green, this one has the more muted neutral green. And this is also neutral in the foliage on the very bottom of the picture too. Again, the result that I'm able to get out of this device is really amazing. And lastly, this picture right here. This is one of my other models, Patrice, and this one is shot on a blue backdrop. And what I can tell you right now is that the blue that I'm seeing on here matches really closely with the blue that I'm able to see on the BenQ display. And again, the display is turned at an angle, so you may not be able to match the blue entirely, but this blue looks much more closer in tone and hue compared to the more generic profile blue. And the cameras might not show much about it, but essentially this blue is more of like a deeper saturated blue. This one has a little bit more cyan and then you can kind of probably see there. So, so far, so good in terms of tonal response. Another thing too that I have actually printed out and I tried to make this go on the top of the page, but it didn't. This is what they call the color checker proof. And this is the one that I showed earlier when I was opening the box. Essentially what you can do with a color checker proof is print this chart using the profile that you have to view this under the light condition that you're viewing the prints in. And you simply would just overlay the color checker proof on top, just like so. And again, I'm gonna do this from, you know, from where I'm standing perspective wise. So when you do this, you want to make sure that you don't touch the color swatches, but you can see there that even if I zoom up close into it, the color that I'm seeing between these holes as you can kind of see there, 
and what I'm actually seeing on the paper matches really closely. So this is another way to proof the color profile that you have and is a great way to just view how accurate your colors is going to be. So again, so far, first impression has been amazing. What I like to do is go over quickly i1 profiler software and just briefly touch on the printing aspect of things and what i'm going to do too is down the road i'm going to do a lot more videos on how to profile how many color patches to use but this is for instance the color patches the numbers that you would choose so for instance on my other paper for this large canstone infinity paper i was using 1632 and what I can do here is on the workflow of the next one, I can then pick on the device I'm using, which, the, which is the i1 Pro 3 Plus. And for here, I will choose Super B because this is a 13 by 19 paper. And I will tell you how many pages you're going to be printing on. In this situation, it is four. Under measurement, I don't really have to do any measurement because what happened is I have actually saved all the scans that I made. So I can quickly load in the scans that I have before for this paper. And the data here is pretty much agnostic. It doesn't really matter what color temperature of the lighting that you have. You can just load that data in. So I already have load that data in, but what I need to do first is I need to white balance my spectral photometer. So I'm going to do just that. And then from here, all my color charts that I've previously measured before are all in there. And I'll show you how I do all these measurements in another video. So if you have done paper profiling before, but you haven't used the i1 Pro series devices using i1 Profiler, it's going to be a little different. I have mentioned about the test chart earlier, but let's talk about the measurement portion of things. So you can measure all these value and save the values that you have read from these charts, and then you can load them at any point in the future so you don't have to go through the measurement again. But I'll show you how to do the measurement right now. So before we can do the measure, we have to white balance our device first with the custom white tile that has that it comes with. So now that it's calibrating, we're going to give it a second. What we're going to do now is move on to this board. This pretty much comes with the entire i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus kit and some assembly is required. So there is a bar there. This works as a guide. And also this white piece right here works as the pretty much the backdrop, the substrate for us to do scanning. There are two pieces on the side. What we're going to do is just line them up like so. And this is the ruler that we're going to put on our print. So we'll have our print there. Put the ruler on top and just line it up to line number one and we'll start there. So now that the device has been calibrated, I'll move it over, mount it to the ruler hover over the white part of things, of the paper, press, hold the button and until you hear that beep, once you hear the beep, slide, drag over, you will hear the beep one more time, that confirms that the first row read successfully, now you can go down to the second row, press hold, hear that tone, drag it across, let go, and you'll hear that tone again. So this is a one pass mode, so literally I'm just going one pass per each row. But let's say if I go through it really, really fast, let's see what happens. You will hear three bumps and the light on top of here will flash red. That means that the value hasn't been read properly or you have moved too fast. So let's try that again. And again, the speed that I'm going through this is not entirely fast, but it's not really super slow either where I'm really just taking my time going across. It's a moderate speed, so wait till you hear the bump, drag it across. Okay, that went too fast. Like so. So I've done this for two different papers so far, and I'm also working with Kensone Infinity. They're going to send me a lot more papers to run a lot more testing with calibration on, so this is going to be extremely fun. But anyway, this is how you go in and measure the charts in i1 profiler and this is how it looks like on the software end of things again you know i'll have more of these videos down the road in the future showing you extensively how you can go in and customize all these options what's the best settings for all of these and it's just going to be a really fun run with this device as far as some of the feedback that i've got about this device that is difficult to measure the color patches 
I haven't run into any problem at all. I think it's still fairly easy, similar to the device that I have used before, which is a very old one. It's from the great Hack Macbeth days, and that was about 15 years ago. I was using the i1 Pro. That's a very, very old device, and it didn't have all these features that it has now. So the nice thing about this device that I really love is the workflow part of it. So now that I have the measurement in, I can actually accommodate for the lighting. So I can do the standard illumination if I want to, but what I can really do here is go into measure. I can put the ambient diffusion on the spectrophotometer. So just apply it on top like so. And now what I can do is simply hold this up to the light like I have right now. Press on a button on the side and this is going to give me a measurement, the spectral readout of the light that I have in the studio. So technically we see that on the screen right now. This is the lighting that I'm going to be calibrating my profile to. So when I'm printing under these lighting conditions, the lighting will match perfectly. This is something really amazing about this spectral photometer that you can't do with any other device I have tried so far. You can do it with their advanced spectral photometer such as the one that come before it. The i1 Pro 2, you can do that with. But this is an amazing feature because if you're doing pro printing and you want to match the lighting in the gallery so that the profile match exactly, this will be what you need to do. Take this into the studio environment, measure the lighting that is going to land on the print, and then generate a profile with that specific lighting in mind. This way you can do a full end-to-end -end color management that you are not able to do before. And this is just really fantastic. From here though, this value, what you can do is also save the measurement. So you can save the measurement and go into save as. So for instance, if I already have measured that environment, I can just go to save measurement and simply choose studio light. Or I also have a D65 bulb that I use to do color proofing on. And I can choose between the two and you can see the spectral curve changing there. Once I'm done with this, I can just choose the way how I want to build the profile and then save the profile out. So anyway, this has been an absolutely amazing journey with the i1 Photo Pro 3 Plus. I think that this device is really impressive and just standing there and scanning all these color patches, even though there are a lot of patches that I have to scan in and just slide the thing manually back and forth, has just been an amazing experience to be able to do this again. So make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to have a lot more content about the iOne Photo Pro 3 Plus coming out, including how do you go in and calibrate and profile printers and so forth. So this is going to be really fun. If you have any questions about this at all, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. And until next time, art is right.